In our last tip, we talked about the use of battery contactors in our home-built aircraft. We can finish this discussion by talking about wiring in a diode to the circuitry of our contactors and talk about why we should use them and how to connect them properly. When we flip the master switch and turn on a contactor, we are supplying power to an internal coil. This coil is an electromagnet that pulls our large contacts closed and keeps them closed as long as we keep the coil energized. When we turn off the master switch, that magnetic coil stops pulling and an internal spring returns the contacts to the open position. Simple? Actually, there is a special event that occurs when we turn off that master switch, a phenomena that is explained in physics and electronics textbooks you might remember from high school or college. It has to do with collapsing magnetic fields in inductors, or the contactor coil in our example here. It turns out that when we turn off the master switch and stop the flow of current in our coil, the magnetic field in that coil drops back to nothing very quickly. And here's where the physics comes in. A collapsing magnetic field inside of a coil of wire induces a strong reverse voltage, a hundred times greater than the original 12 volts used to energize the coil, and that goes back into the circuit. Where does this voltage go? The circuit has a break in it, the open master switch. With the context of the master switch open, that high reverse voltage spike from the collapsing magnetic field will often arc or spark across the switch's terminals because it has nowhere else to go and is strong enough to jump the switch's open gap. It might not do any damage, but over time, many sparks or arcing at the switch terminal can damage the switch. Also, this spark will radiate a signal that can possibly provide havoc with sensitive electronic equipment. It is good practice to eliminate this spark altogether. And we have a simple way to do this. Connect a diode across the coil. Builders often ask, where does the diode go? The answer, electrically wired across the coil. A diode has a unique property that allows current to flow only in one direction through it. A diode will, will always have a band or other marking so you know what direction to hook it up. The band must go towards the battery positive. This is important or you will blow a circuit. Let's follow the function of the diode in our contactor circuit with the master switch closed. The current flows from the battery through the coil and then to ground by way of the master switch. The diode in this case appears as virtually non-existent to the circuit as current cannot flow through it in this direction. It essentially has no purpose in the circuit while the coil is energized. Now, when we flip our master switch off, the voltage is removed from the coil and within a split moment, the coil's magnetism collapses and induces a high reverse voltage into the circuit. But now the diode poses a short circuit to this reverse voltage and safely dissipates that electrical energy so that the switch never sees it. There will be no spark or arc. To summarize, from our Department of Sweeping Generalizations, when using any contactor, whether it is a battery contactor or a starter contactor, anytime a coil is involved, use a diode wired across the coil. 
Some contactors provide the diode already wired in. Many do not. The least expensive way is to purchase a bunch of these diodes, less than a dollar a piece, and then crimp the appropriate ring terminal on the ends so they are easily installed onto the terminals of your contactor. It is wise to insulate the leads of the diode as they expose 12 volts, which should be protected from shorts.